Welcome back to Terpy Eyes. I'm Ryan, and this video is sponsored by Mars Hydro. They provided the discount code Terpy Eyes that can be used on their website for any of the products they offer. We're using a complete 2x4 grow tent setup from Mars Hydro, which consists of a 2x4 grow tent, a SP3000 LED grow light, a 6 inch inline fan with thermostat controller, and a 6 inch carbon air filter. We are approaching the middle of the flower stage of the Gorilla Cookie Perp strain grow and have overcome a couple setbacks along the way to get to this point. After doing a complete defoliation of the plants and removing the smallest plant to make space for the remaining four plants, they seem to perk right back up and are on a good path to remove healthy for the remainder of the grow but we needed to confirm our pH and EC levels in the growing medium to make sure we won't have any issues going forward. When we removed the large fan leaves, a bunch of them were damaged and showed signs of deficiencies. So we needed to check our runoff while we watered our plants. Because I don't have a drip tray under each of the plants, I just remove one of the plants out of the tent and use a plastic bucket to collect the runoff. While we wait for our nutrient mix to make it through the growing medium, I go ahead and water each of the other plants. Any runoff that might happen inside the tent is easily removed with a wet vacuum. There are soil meters on the market that can measure the growing medium, but this is the cheapest way for for any home grower to get an idea of what's going on inside the growing medium. We got a reading of 7.3 EC and a pH of 5.7, which tells us that we have stacked our EC level far too high, which is locking out any nutrients for the plants to take up. To resolve this, we are giving the plants straight water the next time we need to water the plant to bring our EC levels down. If we were to run water through the plants at this point, we would run the risk of overwatering or starting root rot. Keep a close eye on the plant at the top of the screen and notice it dried back far too much which caused heavy burning on the leaves. With such a high EC already in the growing medium while being wet, it actually increased as the moisture content dried back. I was away for a couple days and because that specific plant is super vigorous it drinks a lot more water than the others and I wasn't able to make it back in time before it went dry. The other plants did dry back more than I would have liked but didn't result in as much damage as that specific plant. It's definitely a big disappointment to have damage happen on the plants as we are approaching late flower stage, but shit's gonna happen while trying to balance different things in life and keep everything going at the same time. With that being said, if you're enjoying the video so far or have found it at all helpful, to hit that like button. It really goes a long way in supporting the channel and helping us grow. For the next couple waterings, I'm giving the plants straight water pH to 6.3 with no nutrients in it to hopefully bring down the EC level and raise the pH level a tiny bit. which should definitely stabilize the growing medium and plants after the burning they received from the high EC and big dry back. At this point, there is absolutely no way any of this damaged leaves will recover, so we'll just have to ride the remaining of the grow out with them no longer looking the nicest. If we look past the damaged leaves, we can see that the Gorilla Cookie Perp strain does have pretty nice buds and trichome development to them. So we will have to run a couple of these phenos again in the future where we don't burn them. So we can see just how they turn out in a better situation and hopefully we can find a keeper. We 
We started giving the plant straight water for the final seven days of flower to make sure we allow for the plant to use up any built up nutrients remaining in the growing medium. Unfortunately, the grow tent next to this tent was the only location that remained with mites that had been battling for months. And I made a mistake at some point touching that other plant in the other tent and coming over to this tent and working on them, which brought over a few mites. Thankfully, they didn't get out of control for this grow. You'll see that other grow in two grow series on the channel, which will finally be the end of the mite battle now that I've fully taken care of that in real time. We have finally reached harvest at day 58 of flower for this grow. Definitely far from an impressive run, but I'm very excited to show you the next series on the channel of my truffle breath grow. So for this grow, we're going to be using bags from Grove Bags. This clear bag is meant for fresh frozen harvest or for the freezer, which we'll be using for this harvest. Grove Bags also offers many different types and sizes of bags for dried buds to both cure and store your finished flower in. Highly recommend using these over the typical glass jars many other people use. We'll be going over the drying trimming and curing process in the next series since we have kept the truffle breath grow as dried flour. For this grow we're going to be doing fresh frozen. The dried flower bags keep the flower between 58 and 62 percent relative humidity which is the most ideal range to preserve the freshness of the dried flower. We are using the fresh frozen small bag for this harvest. Since we're going to be using these plants for making a topical skin cream in the future, this is the easiest and most effective way I've found to process the plants for the purposes of making the topical cream. Because there is so much damage on the leaves, I'm giving the buds a quick trim to remove any dry and crusty leaves which serve no process for the remaining processes we are going to be doing on these plants. Under all the dried crusty yellow leaves, the buns aren't as bad as I was expecting. So I'm confident in running a couple of these phenos in a run in the future to see the results we get. Overall, I have to say I'm very happy with the results from the front row egg nutrients during this first run of plants. It didn't shine in this specific tent, but the other tents I had going at the same time as this one really performed amazing as I did not have as many issues in those spots compared to this tent. I'll be sure to make a video in the near future of turning this harvest into some type of topical skin cream so we can all see that process. If you're new to the channel, I upload videos every week covering indoor and outdoor grows, solventless extractions, products and equipment, while showing how to work through different situations along the way. So if that's what you're into, hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell notification so you don't miss out when I post new content. We are only 2,000 subscribers away from our 100,000 subscriber goal by the end of the year, which will be very tight to make. Your help would be greatly appreciated if we can reach that goal if you're not subscribed. And remember to get out there and make it happen. Happy growing everyone.